Hello again folks, uh, this video is going to be this uh, digital clock kit uh, so what we're going to do is going to unpackage it and uh, show you the kit contents and then build it in stages uh, just to keep the time down because there's quite a lot of components in this kit and I don't want it to be hours and hours long so yeah, I um, showed you in the previous video um, but yeah, this is a white version and I think that's indicated by this white circular sticker so presumably it does come in various different colours but yeah, this is available from AliExpress for around £4 of clean delivery to UK. So, we'll go ahead and open it up and uh, see what we get inside. Okay. Right, so we'll just tip it out onto the bench here. So, first thing out is the acrylic, uh, acrylic case. Uh, laser cut looks a reasonable quality. It has got this god awful uh, it's a paper backing, which is sometimes quite difficult to take off. But uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll be functional. And uh, right inside, we've got another sealed bag, which is obviously the kit itself. So possibly this is available with or without the enclosure. I'm not sure. But again, we'll tip it out and see what we've got. So. We've got a couple of uh, packages here. We've got uh, STC 15W040AS and what's that? DS1302. Not sure what either of those are. Uh, presumably some sort of programming because this is capable of temperature and uh, brightness control. And, and on the other side, a little piece of anti-static foam is uh, the uh, drill and line sockets for those and those are just uh, the pressed the pressed steel they're not turned or anything you know cheap quality of course at this price next thing off uh, yeah clearly our displays and oh those are interesting those have got a um, those have got a pressed sort of paper PCB and I might try and disassemble one of these um, yeah, I'll I'll disassemble those once I've paused the video, and uh, we'll show you what those look like inside. Um, we've got a USB to, um, you know, sort of, what do you call it, standard sort of DC plug uh, for the power. Clearly, um, we've got our hardware for the uh, laser cut enclosure. We've got our bag of components. Um, so it's not marked. Uh, yeah, so sorry, we've got resistors, we've got a thermistor there, crystal, uh, a few transistors. What are those? Yep. What is it? Are those 80, 8050s or something like that? Uh, yeah, sorry, a uh, piezo buzzer, uh, some small ceramic capacitors, our LDR couple of right angle push button switches, a DC socket and a 1220 lithium uh, battery holder for the battery backup presumably. And yeah, that's all she wrote um, on that. On to her PCB then. Um, yep, yeah, as always, you know, looking at the, looking at the, the PCB itself, really nice, you know, fairly fairly solid quality PCB, nice silk screen on there, uh, 8550s the transistors are, yeah there's four of those uh, and we can see we've got LDR and uh, thermistor locations up there and uh, got a gold plated contact for the um, lithium battery holder. Um, on the other side of the reverse, yeah we've got a, a display, what do you call it? Uh, locations and as we can see here it does actually tell us um, given the indication of what the orientation of uh, these displays are and um, you can see the, the white dot down there so on that one it's there it's on that one is there as well however on this one it is inverted and presumably that's for possibly the, the temperature using that as a degree symbol and uh, this one is back to the usual orientation okay so, I think what I shall do first is I will pause the video and I will populate um, all these resistors, the transistors, um, various other 
okay it's a smaller components and then we come back we'll just finish off with maybe the, the plug the lithium battery holder and the, the uh, piezo transducer there just just to to speed up the video somewhat so i shall see you in a, a few minutes hopefully hey folks welcome back right as you can see i've got the majority of the uh uh, sort of through hole uh, components on there but it's all through hole but you know what I mean I've got most of the resistors uh, I've put the sockets on the crystal the little ceramic caps the transistors and uh, yeah the uh, sockets if I haven't already mentioned those um, so the main uh, other things that are to go on now are these uh, mechanical switches the you know all the mechanical parts really and the sounder uh, now there is two additional parts that uh, need to go on uh, which are not mechanical and that is the LDR and the thermistor now the reason I've not put those on just now is because the images um, of this kit built on AliExpress show the LDR and the thermistor you know substantially higher outside the case unprotected um, and if you look at the actual case itself we can see there's this, an oval cutout for those two components to stick out of and like I say, on the uh, on the images, uh, if I can just set this up somehow, the images showing this a constructed kit. It looks a bit like that, and I think that looks a bit gash to be honest. So, what I want to do is is get it so that those components are just uh, level with the top of the case. Right, so what I'm going to do is, uh, as part of this video, um, we'll put on these mechanical parts, and then then I will probably pause the video. And then what I want to do is fit two of these um, uh, seven segment displays to give me the width of the kit, uh, fit it into the case and just see how I'm going to position those two components there. Right, so we shall crack on and uh, what I'll do is I'll probably zoom in a little bit. Uh, on the subject of those seg seven segment displays, I told you I was going to open one up for you. And yes, I'm... Um, there's the plastics, so it's just um, a light guide, it's not an actual um, light pipe if you like, it's just a cut out and it's moulded to, to channel the light. And on the other side, it's just some tiny surface mount um, LEDs on there. So yeah, really cheaply made, you know, pressed paper PCB, but it should hopefully do the job. Uh, I can just pop that back together without breaking it. Right, so back to the soldering. So first thing I'm going to put on is the holder for the uh, lithium battery, and uh, it's it's, a, it's got a key if you like, or there's there's a marking on there to show you which side the the stopper goes at. Because obviously we don't want to push the lithium battery all the way through and potentially short it. So holds itself in place nicely. She'll just uh, turn her iron heat up and place her solder on. Right, so that's on there nice and securely, as you can see. Next thing will be the DC jack. Again, it's holding itself in place quite nicely, so. You sometimes need a little bit extra heat in these, but on on this particular one, the um, the terminals are actually quite thin, so they shouldn't require a lot of heat to to um, flow the solder into them. Right, that's on there nice and securely and what I think we should really do as well as you can see the uh, terminals for that uh, if I just get it to focus sorry uh, the terminals actually sit quite proud of the board there so I'm just gonna pop one of our uh, seven segment modules on there just to see how it fits and whether we need to trim those off they look like there's quite a bit of a gap underneath, so possibly not. I 
and uh, yeah I think that will do no it won't actually I'm gonna have to trim that off slightly so probably shouldn't use these snips but they're thin enough that it's not gonna damage them I don't think you can hear the bits ricocheting so we'll try that again And yeah, we can see that sitting now flush to the board, which is nice. Okay. Um, right, next thing we shall put on is our piezo sounder. And clearly marked positive on the board and the label's always got the, the positive marking on it. Sometimes it's on the bottom or on the side as well. But yeah, the label's normally where it goes. I'll we'll just pop that in. We'll splay the leads out slightly just to hold it in place. You don't want to bend it too much um, just in case um, you damage it because they're, obviously they're onto that piezo, which is, you know, a sort of crystal if you like, and it could uh, actually shatter. So we'll just pop that on. Got. Make sure it's nice and flush to the board. If it's not, just put a little bit of pressure, reheat the joint, and you can hear, feel that popping back onto the board. You know, instead of locating itself nice and flush. Okay, so just cut those off as well. Hopefully, that was all on camera. Um, Sometimes best practice just to leave uh, this the label until you finish completing the board. Uh, however little the risk, you could potentially drop a, a little uh, blob of solder in there and it could damage it. But I know it's a bit uh, uh, far-fetched, if you will. And the last thing to put in is our tactile switches for obviously controlling and setting the, the unit. And these, again, are nice formed leads. Uh, the two smaller leads at the front there are clearly the actual switch itself and these uh, sort of formed leads are the mechanical sort of fixing of the switches if you like. So I will actually just bend those ones out because I think that one may have been slightly um, knocked off uh, or the shape been distorted so it went very easily and didn't seem to click into place. So. First of all, we'll do a mechanical connection. Is it fairly liberal with the solder on this? Because we obviously want it to secure the switch for, you know, if we're going to be operating it quite a lot, set an alarm or whatever. Okay. And then again, just check, make sure it's nice and flush to the board, which it is. And then we'll actually solder the um, switch contacts now okay right so that looks like a a reasonable job and again we'll just uh, place one of these seven segment displays on just to make sure that the um, terminals on those switches aren't going to um, cause us any problems when we come to um, solder that in and again it's not quite sitting flush so I'm going to trim those off Now I do wear glasses, but of course if you're doing this, make sure you're wearing safety goggles because the last thing you want to do is uh, get a little piece of uh, you know, trimming flying off your, your snips and get straight into your eyes. We only get one set of eyes, folks, so look after them, of course. Right, so 
I think that's us about there. So we shall, I don't know why I took that back off. Uh, we could just have soldered that in place. So we'll just double check. There's no other components around there that require fitting, which there's not. So we shall put a seven segment display in. And always helps if you um, on a board like this or any any kind of kit you're doing, if you can balance the board out, as in you know keep the the board level, it makes your your soldering job so much easier because once it's in, you know it's level, you can push it home, make sure it's nice and flush, and then uh, you know do your soldering job, and it's going to be a far neater, far more accurate job. So, I, I shall pause the video and I'll tack up those two seven segment displays. So I'll see you in a second. Hey folks, uh, right, so that's two of the seven segment displays uh, put onto the uh, actual circuit board now. And I've uh, clearly put the housing on it. I've not taken the plastic, uh, sorry, paper off the plastic. But if we look in there, we can see that the circuit board, the PCB, is right up to the top of the... Um, the housing so what i want to do is i want to solder in the remaining two components the thermistor and the ldr so they are basically at right angles clearly to the pcb and just above the edge so yeah we'll take it down uh, take it apart sorry and uh, do that now so look at the board again the components will go on the rear side so there we go. Um, yeah, so here's our um, thermistor and here's our LDR. So LDR goes in like so. And if I just bend that up, um, so just, just above the PCB. And that should do perfectly there. So I'll just splay the leads out slightly. <coughs> A little tad more solder. Happy with the positioning, so now we just tack it up on the other side. A little bit more so than that first joint, and that will do. Is nice, nice clean job. Trim the leads off. Like so. So now you can see uh, our LDRs ready in position, and that's going to sit just nicely in the cutout on the uh, uh, PCB, uh, sorry the enclosure I should say. And so we're going to do the, exactly the same thing with our thermistor. Um, now this is quite going to be quite tight so I think what we might do on this one is actually do it um, like so so we'll, rather than having it flat we'll have it end on so we'll just pop that through there like that and bend it up okay maybe do that a little bit more now you want to be careful when you're doing this not to apply too much pressure otherwise you could break the the glass uh, okay so what we'll do here is we'll just tack up one side. We'll have a look at it, check we're happy with its positioning, and I'm reasonably happy with that. 
and then once I've done that I'll just uh, do the final side. And that, as they say, is that. Trim the leads off. And the only thing to do now is put our remaining two um, displays on. So, I shall uh, pause the video and do that now so as not to bore you. Um, and then we'll come back to the case assembly. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So, I shall see you in a few moments. Hello again folks, welcome back. Right, okay, so that's the last two seven segment displays uh, in place. Uh, so, final sort of part of this is just the sort of, uh, basically just inserting the ICs now and then, then putting it in the enclosure. So, we'll just uh, stick these in. So, gently bend the, the leads in because uh, these are sometimes quite tight um, and just make sure we get our orientation correct. Uh, using the notch on the end uh, which marries up with the notch on the silk screen and of course on the socket which we uh, well which I did when I was soldering those in so again just squeeze the IC's legs in just to get them all parallel and that should do the job notches on the left so And those are enough to go in slightly more. Sometimes an easier way of doing this is just uh, gently pressing it on a surface, a flat surface, and uh, almost sort of rolling it. Um, but don't go too far, you just have to bend them all back again uh, with a pair of pliers or something. So just a little tweak more. Hopefully that should do it now. And don't press this in until you're 100% certain that it's going to go in. Check both sides. Yeah, reasonably happy with that. And that is very tight, that. But it's in. And as we can see, none of the pins are it, none of the pins have uh, ended up outside the uh, socket, so we shouldn't have any problems with that now. Uh, at this point, we can now remove the sticker off the little piezo buzzer, and there we go. There's that positive marking I was telling you about earlier. And you know what? I'm not convinced that the sticker was on the right way around. Anyway, hey. Uh, only time will tell. If it doesn't work, I might have to watch that video back, and that's going to be a big job getting that off. But uh, sometimes it doesn't matter anyway. Right, so what I've done is I've already taken the uh, protective film off the perspex or the acrylic uh, enclosure, and I've already constructed, as you can see, four sides of that just to speed up the video because this can be quite tricky. Now, uh, a couple of things I didn't show you that came with it was quite an extensive set of instructions, both for construction and programming it. And there was also this um, film, which as you can see, uh, was oversized. Now the instruction says to stick it on to uh, stick it onto the the front of the display, but I am choosing not to do that because I think the actual size of it should be fine. Um, you know, and it's not going to slip out uh, the side of the case. Uh, it says to use scissors. What I did was I placed it on, I placed the um, actual clock unit itself on top of the the film. Aligned it and then just cut down the sides with a really sharp knife. Um, so we shall now put it together. So obviously we want to make sure this is free of any dust. So if I just use a, a lint-free cloth here, get any sort of residue off it, and uh, yeah, that should be good enough. And then what we'll do is we'll place that on front of the. Um, front of the actual 
uh, displays and just make sure that um, it's not marking that side so we want it so it's not going to show up when the unit's turned on and you're going to want to spend a little bit of time doing this just to get it perfect because if you're anything like me if you get a fingerprint on something it, it really annoys me <laughs> um, so yeah So that's reasonably okay, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to put this in, obviously taking care of our LDR and thermistor up there, and if we just pop that in, like so, and make sure it films, um, ah right, now the film itself is going to be quite troublesome because it's adhering to the, the uh, acrylic case almost like those uh, window stickers you get you know you get through the door um, if you're putting it inside of your car it's sticking to it like that so we'll just uh, align it and then we'll place the the clock unit in like so Right, one last check. I know I haven't put a lithium battery in because I don't have one yet. Um, but that's it all together now, and it's just a case of uh, assembling the final parts of the enclosure. So, to put these in, uh, what it is is it's almost a cross shape, and what you do is you put your nut in. Um, in this a slot there, take your uh, screw and it pops down through, hits the nut in the slot and the, the slot itself sort of locks the nut and allows you to tighten it up. Now just nip it very slightly, you don't want, uh, you want, it, don't want it super tight until you've double checked the alignment. Um, Uh, yeah, because obviously you run the risk of, uh, if you over tighten it, it's going to snap. Now this one's going to be quite easy because it's going to rest against the side of the 7 segment display there. And I'll show you from this angle this time. So the nut's held and located in the, the enclosure. And then the, the screw just goes through that. And you can just see when I tightened it up there, it, it popped out slightly. Okay, and the last one. And that's it. So one final check, make sure everything's looking good. A bit of dust in there, but I'll clean that out later on. Final little nip up, nothing, let's see, nothing extreme. Just uh, enough to hold it together. And that is our completed clock unit. And I think you'll agree it looks quite nice. Um, so we've got that film on there just to sort of diffuse the, the white LEDs. Uh, we've got access to our two tactile switches. On the back we can see a nice, neat, tidy uh, job in there. Uh, so people can admire your handiwork. Uh, socket access there for the power. And on the top we've got our LDR and a thermistor. And as you can see, uh, barely protruding which is what I wanted this unit's not going to generate much heat at all so um, but what you can do just having had a look at the instructions is you can um, sort of adjust the thermistor so if you know for instance that your room's temperature is uh, 20 degrees uh, you can let this obviously settle down and then adjust the display to 20 degrees and that's a sort of calibrates it. and any increase or decrease will obviously uh, display accurately so the last thing of course to do is input power so 
I have put my uh, USB cable into a wall charger and we'll just apply and see what happens. So there we go, really nice, uh, really nice looking display actually, quite impressed with that. Now let's just cover up the LDR and see if the display adjusts brightness. Of course this might take a little bit of time. No, I can't see any sort of visible difference there. Try putting it under the light. No, it doesn't seem to be making any any sort of difference. So let's say uh, have a quick look at the instructions. Um, insert IC last, install lithium battery, get power on, blah blah blah. Reset, press two keys at the same time for five seconds and then it displays 759. Five seconds later it displays 0800. Reset is done, buzzer responds for a while. So let's do that. Two, three, four, five, 759. Okay, so that's it reset uh, to 8 o'clock, um, and as it says, the buzzer made its noise. Right, to set up the hour, so the top key is our function key, and the bottom key is the adjustment key. So it says it's 19 degrees C in here, and like I suggested, it's using that... Um, that a uh, dot up there for the degree symbol. Um, right, so set the hour, uh, press the function key, uh, and blinking. Right, so press and hold it, presumably. Don't know what that's for. Uh, all right here we go so we're currently oh my god i didn't realize this was taking so long uh yeah so it's 24 hour clocks which is good so we'll change that to 18 minutes past midnight um now what is this Presumably that's our alarm. Hmm. Yeah, I think this will take a little while to... Uh, oh, this must be the date now. So we're at currently September... Seventeenth. Um, what is this for? Right, so there's my time. Ah, I've done that again. Right, so there's a the temperature. Right, I think basically there's various flashing dots and whatever it tells you. So, uh, we're September the 17th. No idea what this is yet. It's uh, 19 minutes past midnight. And hopefully it should give us a temperature next. Yeah, I thought it, there must be a setting to like, allow it to cycle through. But anyway, uh, I think that's a long enough video, kind of like 35 minutes. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, uh, if you found it interesting, of course, please like and subscribe. And um, we shall see you soon for another video. Um, yeah, maybe something similar, maybe something different. Anyway, guys, in the meantime, take care of yourselves and uh, I'll see you soon. Cheers again. Bye-bye.
Hi folks, this is a little bolt on video uh, just to show you uh, that it does uh, dim when the lights go out. As you can see, and when you turn it back on, it brightens back up. Yeah, interestingly as well, I turned this off, um, I removed the power from it without the lithium battery fitted and uh, for at least four or five minutes and it actually remembered the, the time and date etc. So I don't know how it's managed that even with those uh, small ceramic capacitors. Um, yeah, quite interesting. Anyway guys, catch you soon. Bye bye.